The whole world has voted that way economically since then. We've seen the collapse of the crypto market, certainly oh, the collapse shit. of the NFT space. But to be honest, oh. I thought that it was just fascinating to hear what they had done, what they'd gotten. So I'm going to try and explain this the best way as I can on a drawing. So um, Black Civic is going to be the orange um, marker. And I'm going to be the turquoise for obvious reasons. Okay, so um, first, how did this start? I was heading in this direction. I was heading in this direction and I had to make a left to go this way so I was right here I'm right here waiting for my light to turn or my turn to turn left so if I didn't make this clear already in the video um, basically there was a Tacoma you could see it in the video whoops this is in the way you could see in the video that there is a like a great a white Tacoma right here going left but because the Tacoma broke down now it's stuck right here at the very front to go left so none of us are moving and as I'm approaching the the I guess the intersection I can already see that the light has already been green for a good amount of time so I didn't really pay much attention like to the point of like people, someone being, um, I didn't think about someone was broken down at the very front, so I just decided to enter the lane regardless. So I enter the lane and I'm waiting there for about 10 to 15 seconds with the green light and no one is moving. So um, I had to pay, I had to pretty much get out of that lane and either make a left hand turn around all these cars or go straight to a longer way home. So I kind of told myself, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to cross over in case that Tacoma isn't really broken down. You know, I don't want to collide into him. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go the longer way home. So my intention was to get out of here and go straight. So in the video, you can see a CRV going in this direction, and. As he passes me, I can see that there's no more vehicles um, behind that CRV. So my next reaction was, okay, we're in the clear, so let's get out of the lane and proceed forward. So I then double check again my back and make sure that there's no one coming after the CRV. Then I turn on my indicator to get out of that lane. So I get out of the lane and right about here is where I collide with the Civic at this point I'm just shocked I don't know what's going on because I didn't see that Civic in any direction whatsoever because as I said I was only paying attention to the CRV passing by so now I'm right here now I'm right here collided with the Civic so we're right here now, collided. And my first reaction was step on the brake, which is what I did. Stepped on the brake, but he just kept going. So he just sideswiped his whole car. And mine is only damaged in the bumper fender area. So um, he comes out of the car. He's, he's like yelling at me, saying it was my fault, this and that, blah, blah. Um, he looked nervous from the get-go, so I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to argue with this guy. So I immediately just said, let's switch informations and just go from there. So we did that, switched the information, took pictures of our driver's license, and he, one, he couldn't find a current um, insurance policy card. It was expired, and in his insurance policy card, it, his name wasn't under the people insured. So that that was a red flag on my end and then his um, license was from Arizona. So an Arizona license with a Stockton address. So that, that was another red flag. But anyways, I told myself, 
after he left, I knew it wasn't my fault. I was just trying to figure out where did this guy come from because he's over here blaming me and yapping away that it was my fault. So lucky me, um, my beautiful girlfriend bought me a dash cam <laughs> a couple Christmas, I think it was last year Christmas, and I did get it installed and I reviewed the footage from the dash cam and I will replay that video for you guys. And the whole world has voted that way economically since then. We've seen the collapse of the crypto market, certainly oh, the collapse shit. of the NFT space. But to be honest, ah. I thought that it was just fascinating to hear what they had done, what they'd got. Um, so what the Civic did was Civic came down from the freeway and he's right here. You can see in the video, he's right here. He has to turn right and... Remember guys, I was only paying attention to the CRV because that was the only car in my in my side of view for my lane, which is this lane that I was trying to enter. So, after the CRV passes by, that Civic said, "Okay, well, I'm going to jump over to the next lane." Like so. But in the video you can kind of see like I I kind of did this a little bit too like this way. He kind of goes like this, so like he's, uh, it's kind of hard to draw, but he kind of went like this. And that's kind of like where we collided right here. It's a lot easier to see in the video, but basically in the DMV handbook, I'll go ahead and put a picture of that as well. Um, it says, um, any right, any right turn, right hand turn that you're going to be doing, you have to stay on the closest lane to the sidewalk or to your right. So he had to go into this lane and then move on over. But in the video, he didn't, he just jumped over to the farthest lane and that's how we collided. So um reviewed the footage with a couple of my friends um everyone said that he should have entered the the first lane but in if the if the people from the insurance are going to review the video then they're going to try and find something that i'm doing incorrectly so the only thing i i did incorrectly um was getting out of the solid line the, so the solid white line you're not supposed to cross a solid white line at all. Um, but the thing is, in the video, you can see that the Tacoma is still at a halt. So it's like, what are we going to do? Are we, so, are we pretty much just trapped behind the Tacoma until he fixes his car and moves on out of the way? So see, that's kind of my defense there. Um, that's what I'm going to end up... That's what I'm going to just keep saying, like... I wasn't going to stay back there. I wasn't going to camp out until that Tacoma moved because I'm permanently trapped in this lane because of the solid white line. I had to get out of it. So I don't know if they're going to make a big deal about that, but I'm just throwing that in there for you guys to, I guess, to think about. But um, basically, um, I feel like it's going to be 50-50, which... It's whatever. My car's only worth like 5000 on a good day. So I can easily replace the fender, bumper, and headlight within like, with like two to three hundred dollars. So it's no big deal. The guy has a like a way bigger damage on both his doors and quarter panels. So I feel like he's going to be out of luck on that one. But um, not to get too like go into personal detail or too into detail, but. I already spoke, I already filed a claim for both parties, for both insurance, um, and my insurance is cool and everything, they they spoke to me, they already got my side of the story, and they said they're going to talk to the other insurance, but when I got the phone off the other person's insurance, they pretty much told me that it's probably best that I go through my insurance to get my car fixed, if I wanted to get it fixed sooner because they still have to go under investigation on this guy's um, insurance. Which is where the whole 
I never saw his name on the policy card. So that they wouldn't get, they wouldn't really tell me because I tried getting that answer out from them, but they just wouldn't tell me. But it seems like that guy was not insured under the policy. Um, so if it does end up going that direction, um, I'm going to have to go through the uninsured motorist protection. Um, I did I did speak to my dad and he said that there was actual um, protection for that. I thought we didn't have it, but he went to go verify that and apparently we do. So um, chances are I might get the Corolla fixed if it does um, fall in my favor, which I hope it does because again, um, I was I don't feel I don't feel like I was in the wrong because this guy jumped my into my lane, but he was supposed to stay in the first lane, which was empty. So again, um, hopefully I didn't bore you guys out too much with this explanation, but that's basically what happened. I know a couple of you guys saw my update on Instagram, so. Um, a couple of you guys did message me asking if I was okay and whatnot. I mean, it wasn't that it wasn't that big of an impact. It was just just sh startled me, I guess, shocked me. Um, it is what it is. Shit happens. Not the end of the world. Maybe if it was my sixth gen, then I probably would have been been a different story. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this. Um, what you think either insurance parties will say um let me know what yeah just let me know what you guys think about it i'm really curious to know uh what do you guys think about i guess this whole thing was i in the wrong or was he in the wrong who knows man who knows but i'm really curious to find out um what you guys think about that so let me know in the comments down below and with that i'm gonna end this video because it's a little going into 11 minutes so um Willow Springs videos will be out later this week. I'm still a little too tired and kind of backed up on some stuff here, so I won't have time to edit those videos out. But if you guys do want to see some content, just go follow me on Instagram. I tend to post more there before YouTube anyway. So um, I'll talk to you guys later. See you guys.